Today's a fun day. I'm heading out to a buddy's house to set up a new rifle. Here's why. So I invest probably 95% of my time as a hunter into learning where animals live, their movement patterns, the habitats, just like the quality of animals that live in certain areas. I've definitely learned a lot. but I only spent about 5% of my time becoming super proficient with the rifle. And the result has been many blown opportunities or animals just out of range. I want to be more successful. I want to pair the knowledge that I've gained through figuring out where animals live and the country they live in with that of a precision rifle capable out to about 500 yards, but without spending 10 or even five grand that many of the custom gun manufacturers ask. Also, I'm a firm believer that I could make a much better shot at 500 yards with a capable rifle. If I had a really nice rest, if I had time to set up, if I was relaxed and the animal I was shooting at was relaxed, than if I were to make a rush shot at say 200 yards on an animal that was alert or even spooked. So 10 years ago, my grandpa GR gave me his 7mm Remington Mag. It's like a 50 year old rifle, really awesome rifle, and it's done me so good over the years. The only issues it has are one, it's pretty heavy, and two, it's not very accurate past about 200 yards. And there's a lot of things I could do to this rifle to, to make it more accurate, like adding a synthetic stock, glass bedding the barrel, lighter trigger. But doing all those things would just strip it of all of its sentimental value, and that's just, that's not something that I want to do. So instead, I bought a new gun. My goal is to create a precision rifle that's capable of competing with all the high-end rifles out there, all while shooting factory ammunition because I just don't have time to reload. And in today's vlog, I'm going to show you the entire process that I'm going through to create this gun. So here is a list of everything that I went with. I've linked all those items in the description below. I would also like to note that this is not a paid endorsement or sponsorship or ad or anything. I bought this rifle and all the parts to go with it with my own money. The rifle I went with is a Tika T3X Superlight in 7mm Remington Mag. This is a fairly light rifle, right out of the box, it has a 1 MOA guarantee, it's a minute of angle. And what that means is that the gun is capable of shooting a 1 inch group at 100 yards, 2 inch group at 200 yards, 3 inch at 300, so on and so forth. So at 1000 yards the gun is capable of shooting a 10 inch group. Now in hunting terms, not that I have any reason to shoot out to 1000 yards, but if I did, a 10 inch group would be inside the vitals of any western big game animal that I have ever hunted. I'm here with my buddy Phil. Phil's like expert. What's what's the right word, Phil? Gunsmith, gun person, gun nerd. Gun nerd. I guess would be a, a, an appropriate term. Yeah, he's a gun nerd. He's helped me set up my my new Tika. So here we go. The the reason uh, Tika is a good bang for the buck is the parent company Seiko has made essentially a price point line. That being said, all the cool features and all the technology that's in a Seiko are still in the Tikas. Another difference between Seiko and Tika is their magazines. Um, this is a Tika magazine. It's a molded plastic, which is just a little bit chintzy. There's a really cool company out of Bozeman, Montana called Mountain Tactical, and they make aluminum stock aftermarket pieces for Tikas. And this is a aluminum magazine. They also do all sorts of different custom parts, and I'll probably be adding a few of those uh, to this gun. I started with a 7mm M mag. I shot everything with it. Antelope, elk, deer. The bullet selection for it is very good. How uh, efficiently the bullet travels through the air is also very good in the 7mm. As far as a factory, like, do-it-all gun, a 7mm is a great choice. This round was recommended to me by a couple different friends because of their performance and consistency in a factory load without breaking the bank. You give your rifle a woman's name. Haven't you seen Full Metal Jacket? No. You've never seen Full Metal Jacket? No. Full Metal Jacket is a very famous movie. Most of the movie is boot camp. In one of the scenes, when they all get their duty rifles, the drill sergeant explains to them that they will name their rifle a woman's name because it's the only <laughs> they're gonna see for a long time. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can include that. <laughs> The Tika come with this stock dovetail. This is where the rings would clamp on. A better system is to put a pick rail 
like this from Mountain Tactical on there. A couple reasons you want to do this. The dovetail works, but things can slide on it if it gets bumped really hard. This pins into the top of it. So once you have it all screwed down, the chances of it moving are slim to none. If you're gonna spend money anywhere, spend money on the connection between your scope and your rifle. Buy high-end rings, buy a high-end base, because if you have a high-end scope and a high-end rifle, but the connection between the two is junk, then you're gonna get a junk result. It's kind of garbage in, garbage out. What we're doing is we're leveling the rifle. You want your crosshairs of your scope to be directly over the center of your bore from the beginning, knowing that the rifle's level. Then when we set the scope up, we'll be able to level the crosshairs and then we'll put a, another level on there so we can identify when we're level in the field. We want the rings as far apart as possible to have the best stability on the scope tube. The eye relief on a scope is the distance you have to be from the scope in order to see through it clearly, not seeing a vignette. And we're just setting it so it's comfortable for Steve to shoot. So when he gets behind the rifle, he doesn't have to like lean way forward or put his head way back to see or do something silly like that. All right, now I'm gonna get behind it and check the eye relief for me since I'm the shooter. So you need a level to know if you're shooting straight or not, if you're on a side hill. Even if you think you're level, but the terrain, the way it looks, makes you tip it one way or the other and you have to shoot a really long way, it's gonna either make your bullet impact left or right, depending on which direction you're tilting everything. The problem with levels is most of them have either the screws coming in from the bottom or one screw coming from the top or one from the bottom, or just one screw in general. When you have this on your scope, it's hard to get at. Like you can't get your torque wrench in here to torque it down. And since you're taking all the time and energy to make sure every screw is torqued properly, why wouldn't you want to have your level torqued properly as well? If you uh, over tighten rings on scopes, they can damage the tube of the scope. If you can't get at the screws because they're in the bottom, you just gotta tighten it by hand, which is kind of silly. The other problem with levels is once you're setting them and you, you twist them around the scope to get the bubble right in the middle, then when you go to tighten them down, you're gonna put a little bit of pressure on this screw, then a little bit of pressure on this screw, and sometimes it can pull your bubble out of level. This particular level only has one screw. It likes to pull around while you're setting it, and it's super hard to set. So. Voila, we have a solution. This is the uh, rapid level. Both screws come from the top, as they should. You set this on your scope, get it essentially where it's level, torque them down. Even if it's not perfect, you don't care because there's a micro adjust on this level. Once you have it torqued down properly, you can just unlock the lock screw in the back, use this one over here to micro adjust your bubble, bam, you're done. And it probably takes about as much time to set up as it takes to describe how to set it up. You're a professional, man. I'm a professional. I'm a professional talker, I guess. Best way to set your scope's crosshairs is to aim them at something that you know is true, plumb, up and down. Shooting well is all about consistency consistency in your load, consistency in your rifle. All the screws on a rifle need to be torqued to an appropriate setting. Rings, 15 inch pounds. That is all you need to tighten them to. If you don't have a torque wrench, go out and buy a torque wrench. If you don't wanna buy a torque wrench, go find a friend with a torque wrench because otherwise you have no clue how tight you're tightening things down. Rings, very easy to over tighten and crush your scope tube and then people don't know why their scope isn't doing what it's supposed to because you broke it. All right, so the scope on this rifle is a Leupold VX5 HD 3 to 15 power scope with an MOA turret on it. As far as what power scope is the best, like yeah, more power is definitely gonna get you closer to the target, but another really important factor to consider is target acquisition. And in talking to my friend Phil, for all of his competition shoots, he prefers a 12 power scope. For him, 12 power is basically the perfect combination of magnification and fast target acquisition. Next up, I'm gonna zero the rifle at 100 yards. Okay, 
And next up, I'm gonna jump on the computer and go into Hornady's Ballistic Calculator. I've included a link in the description. I'll go in and I'll input the various parameters here, um, all of which you can find either on the box ammunition or on Hornady's website, just under the, under the ammunition page. And then I will go to Calculate, and this is gonna spit out a ballistics calculation. And then I will print this. Do note that if your shots are either high or low, go back into the ballistics calculator and either increase or decrease the muzzle velocity because the muzzle velocity that's printed on the box of bullets or on their website isn't necessarily true to what the gun shoots. So I've printed off the ballistics chart and there's a rock out here that I've ranged at 525 yards. And the ballistics chart tells me that I need to adjust my turret to nine MOA. All right, so now that I have my MOA adjusted, I'm going to level the scope and take the shot. Got him. And it's that easy. I'll be taking a few more shots at some different ranges just to make sure everything's dialed in, but uh, I think she's good to go. All right, that is a wrap for today. So I hope this vlog really helped some people out and made the process of setting up a new gun easier to understand. Please like this video if you liked it, and if you want to see more, subscribe. That would help me out a ton. I'll see you next time. Did ya? Did it? Did it? Did it? Man, it's there. It's my dad, I'll do. Hey, I'll do.